Today I'm rising to inform the House of an extremely serious matter. I just informed the leaders of the opposition directly that I want now to speak with all Canadians. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. We bring you shocking news that broke today across Canada that CSIS alleges agents of the Indian government are behind the murder of Hardeep Singh Najjar. Due to the seriousness of the content of this video, we are skipping the preamble out of respect. We will be showing you the moment that Trudeau made the announcement in the House of Commons, the statements by each of the opposition leaders that you won't see on the news, and what happened after that, and our analysis. Now let's get into it. For those that don't know what we are referring to, here is a recap. This is Hardeep Singh Najjar. He was shot while sitting alone in his truck around 8.30 p.m. and two masked assailants were seen fleeing from the scene. They eventually jumped into a waiting car and fled. In the days before his death, Najjar had told local journalists he feared for his life. In June, Balpreet Singh, legal counsel for the World Sikh Organization of Canada, a non-profit that advocates for the interests of Canadian Sikhs, told the Star that Najjar had spoken with CSIS in the past about credible threats to his life. Najjar had been accused of insurrection and terrorism-related offenses in India, including allegations he conspired to kill a Hindu priest. He was also involved in the organization of an unofficial referendum for a Sikh state being taken around the world. Thousands attended his funeral, with people coming from around the world to pay their respects. His death sparked protests outside the Indian consulate in Vancouver, with supporters referring to him as a martyr and insisting the Indian government was responsible for his death. This is how it all played out immediately after the mainstream media cameras stopped following question period. Speaker, today I'm rising to inform the House of an extremely serious matter. I just informed the leaders of the opposition directly that I want now to speak with all Canadians. Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar. Canada is a rule of law country. The protection of our citizens and defence of our sovereignty are fundamental. Our top priorities have therefore been, one, that our law enforcement and security agencies ensure the continued safety of all Canadians, and two, that all steps be taken to hold perpetrators of this murder to account. Canada has declared its deep concerns to the top intelligence and security officials of the Indian government. Last week at the G20, I brought them personally and directly to Prime Minister Modi in no uncertain terms. Any involvement of a foreign government in the killing of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil is an unacceptable violation of our sovereignty. It is contrary to the fundamental rules by which free, open and democratic societies conduct themselves. As you would expect, we've been working closely and coordinating with our allies on this very serious matter. In the strongest possible terms, I continue to urge the Government of India to cooperate with Canada to get to the bottom of this matter. I also expect it to re reiterate that its position on extrajudicial operations in another country is clearly and unequivocally in line with international law. I know many Canadians, particularly members of the Indo-Canadian community, are feeling angry or perhaps frightened right now. Let us not allow this to change us. Let us remain calm and steadfast in our commitment to our democratic principles and our adherence 
to the rule of law. This is who we are and what we do as Canadians. A moment ago, the Prime Minister made me aware of intelligence from his authorities linking the Indian government to the killing of Hardeep Singh Nijjar. Before going any further, let me offer my condolences to the family of Hardeep Singh Nijjar in the loss that this represents uh, and the outrageous murder that brought it about. If these allegations are true, they represent an outrageous affront to to Canada's sovereignty. Our citizens must be safe from extrajudicial killings of all kinds, most of all from foreign governments. Canadians deserve to be protected on Canadian soil. We call on the Indian government to act with utmost transparency as authorities investigate this murder, because the truth must come out. We must know who performed the assassination and who was behind the assassination. Conservatives will continue to work to get these answers. All Canadians now stand with diaspora communities of Indian origin. And it is now in this time that the official opposition makes an appeal for calm. We are all Canadians. This is our country. We must be united for our home and for each other. Let us all join arms, lock arms and join hands in condemning this murder, standing with the family and friends of its victim. Let us all put aside our differences to stand up for the rule of law, one law for all of our people, a law made in this chamber by Canadians for Canadians. Thank you. The Honourable Member for La Prairie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We were just informed about this situation. We were stunned and shocked. It's entirely unacceptable, of course. First of all, I want to offer my condolences to the family and friends who were impacted by this act. Foreign countries have to respect our borders. It's up to our authorities to intervene on our territory to uphold our laws. We are a state with rule of law. Without exception, everyone has to respect this. It's a clear message that Parliament must convey to the guilty and to those who are the subject of what we're saying today. We have to remain calm, pay attention to developments in this file. In the meantime, the Bloc Québécois is offering its full cooperation to the Prime Minister for a situation that we cannot accept. The Honourable Member for Burnaby South. What we have just learned today in the House is something that shocks the safety and security that so many Canadians rely on. It is outrageous, it is shocking, and it is going to have deep and devastating impacts to Canadians. I want to also begin by acknowledging the family of Hardeep Singh Nijjar, the family who's now learning that the loss of their loved one was a potentially directly related to Indian government involvement. I spoke with Hardeep Singh Nijjar's son, and I could hear the pain of that loss in his, in his voice. And I can only imagine how much more painful it is going to be knowing of this potential connection. Mm. On a personal reflection, I want to share with you what this means to the Sikh community. I grew up hearing many stories that if you raise concerns about human rights violations in India, that you might be denied a visa. That if you went back to India, you could suffer violence, torture, and even death. I grew up hearing those stories. But to hear the Prime Minister of Canada corroborate a potential link 
between a murder of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil by a foreign government is something I could never have imagined. To understand what that means to the community, this is a place that so many people around the world have sought as refuge. People have fled persecution in their home countries where they were threatened by torture and violence and death to come to Canada as a beacon of safety, a place where you could be safe, free from violence, be able to speak your thoughts, speak your mind, and not worry if you would wake up dead the next day or someone you loved would be tortured or killed. That safety and security that so many Canadians feel has now been rocked. It has been shocked and it's been destabilized. I want to send a message directly to activists across our country who have fled persecution, who speak truth to power, knowing of the real dire consequences to themselves and potentially their family. I want to speak directly to people of Indian descent who have come to Canada, who spoke justice and spoke truth to power, who challenged the oppressive practices of India, caste violence, violence against women, systemic abuse of minority communities, systemic abuse of the poor. I want to speak directly to those activists. Governments around the world are trying to silence you, the Indian government, and the Modi government specifically is attempting to silence you. But truth cannot be silenced. Justice cannot and will not be silenced. We know that the practice of the Indian government has been one of division, of violence, persecution, attacking those that are critical of the government. It is now an important time to send a clear message as a democratic country, as a country that respects the rule of law, what will be our response? I want people to know that as leader of the New Democratic Party, I will use every tool at my disposal to ensure that Canada uses every tool, every tool and every power of a democratic nation to bring those responsible to justice. As a result of this link, this corroboration, we have late breaking news from the Associated Press. Canada expels Indian diplomat as it investigates India's possible link to Sikh activists slaying. Canada has expelled a top Indian diplomat Monday as it investigates what Prime Minister Justin Trudeau called credible allegations that India's government may have had links to the assassination in Canada of a Sikh activist. Canadian Foreign Minister Melanie Jolie said the head of the Indian intelligence in Canada has been expelled as a consequence. Okay, so that was a lot. And here are my initial unfiltered reactions to this. Trudeau better be telling the truth on this. And it's one of the reasons I get so angry at him. And you may wonder what that means. Well, what it means is that this guy has lied so much. He has tried to deceive so much. He has broken so many ethics laws that you can't believe him anymore. Is, is he telling the truth? Because the timing of this is very interesting. He goes to the G20. He gets embarrassed by India. His plane won't even take off. And then he finally makes it back. Has a disastrous week announcing housing deals and grocery improvements. And now we hear this. He's lied about what CSIS has said before. How can you believe him? And that's the problem. Because this might be true. It might not be. But we don't know. Because he has no integrity left. And that's what makes me so angry. So, let's say it is true. Fox and I were discussing this before. And the big question I have is, all right. So, this happened in June. And the diplomat was expelled today. Why now? What happened to this decisive action when China was interfering with parliamentary MPs for two years. Where was that decisive action? I saw a comment on a YouTube video on this saying, well, thank God we have a prime minister that's so decisive. Are you kidding? Like, seriously, the Canadians actually think this. And there's so much that we don't know. Uh, you know, was this 
news just brought forth today? Was this news news brought forth in June? Because if Trudeau has said he spoke to the Indian Prime Minister when he was over there, what, last week, week before, about the specific topic, why was the diplomat just expelled today? Right. Why did they wait to expel a Chinese diplomat for two plus years after CSIS informed them that they were targeting Michael Chong's family? Right. Now, here's my thought. Countries around the world are seeing that Canada doesn't do anything when countries interfere with us. There's no repercussions. Yeah, there's no repercussions for foreign entities. But God forbid Canadian citizens would like to hold a protest. You know, the rest of the world is disgusted at what happened in the protest last February. And this is why I'm disgusted with a lot of what Jagmeet said and a lot of what Trudeau said. Because here you are touting, you know, that we're a democratic country and we should be safe and everything. You're trying to throw Canadians in jail for protesting. Don't even. Like, I'm so angry tonight because, A, this might be true, and Trudeau invited this on Canadian soil, and B, it might be false. In which case, he's just using it as a show, which is absolutely reprehensible. And C, we don't know the validity of A or B because we can't trust him. Well, the opposition leaders seem to take it very seriously. Um, I think you can see that Pierre was very somber, very graceful. He was saying that he's going to cooperate. He's calling for calm between the parties. He understands that if this is true, it is very, very serious. And the opposition cannot be seen as hindering any actions to right this wrong, whether it's investigating or or taking action against a foreign country. Like, we don't know what's going to happen right now. Like, I, I don't even know what to say anymore about this government. It's, it's not a government anymore. It's just a kid playing with power. <laughs>